Hello friends, welcome to my channel Civil Smart. Today we are going to design a eccentric footing with uniaxial movement. We have a problem that design a footing subject to the axial load 600 kN and the shear force is 200 kN and the uniaxial movement is mx is 100 kN meter and the column size is 500 by 500 and the column distance from the edge of the footing is x is 800 mm. So we all know that at the property that line that column is eccentric from the center line right footing and we have to design these types of problem at the practically situation so different kinds of problems are there the column is at a distance of e from the center of the footing it will be at the edge of the footing it will be at the corner of the footing so we need to design these types of footings where the columns is at a distance of e that is a eccentric eccentric footings so we need to find a uh, you need to put your data in these pink cells according to your dimensions column distance from the edge unfactored column movement shear force given in the problem and we have to find the required area of the footing that is the size of the footing net we can, next we have to check for the upward soil pressure that is a bearing stress check that is okay or not according to the condition Next, we have to find the depth of the footing because there will be a non-uniform pressure because the angle in this column is at a distance e in that it will create a movement so the pressure will be at a non-uniform pressure right we have to find the sigma max and sigma minimum accordingly depth of the footing we have to find on the basis of the bending movement criteria because the bending movement calculation critical at the face of the column in according to that we have to find the banding movement and accordingly the D required is calculated next is the area of the steel we have provide in the footing we need to calculate and we have to provide accordingly next is the one way shear check will be calculated by this press sheet and next is the punching shear stress check and the over tending check and finally the transfer of load from the column of the footing so let's start this design of the eccentric footing with few clicks so column dimension is given as 500 by 500 you have to put your data 500 by 500 and the column distance from the edge of the footing that is x is 800 mm in our case this is 800 mm you can change according to your situation or condition right so unfected column movement uh, on the column is 100 kN meter shear force is 200 kN horizontal shear force and SBC soil bearing capacity is 200 kN meter FCK is M20 and FI is 415 and the working load that is the load on the column is 600 kN so if you fill these all these data then self weight is 10% of working load will add up and finally the total working load is 660 and the ultimate load is 1.5 times p that is 900 kN so required area of the footing is given by this formula total working load that is 660 divided by the SPC safe bearing capacity it comes out to be 3.3 meter square so if you choose a square footing the square root of AST required is 1.82 meter let's try 1.82 meter if you provide the 1.82 meter as the size of your footing then the increase in dimension is there right because the condition is for the bearing pressure check sigma max should always be less than sigma spc so this is 364 and the sigma spc is 200 mm so it should be less than the spc right so you need to increase the footing dimension if we choose 2.1 then increase the dimension is there if we choose 2.4 again the increase in dimension if we go for 2.5 if we 2.7 3 now the 3 meter by 3 meter is ok size right so eccentricity is 700 mm in this case and M is movement due to eccentricity there will be a movement due to eccentricity that is P into E that is 420 kN meter will be the movement due to eccentricity more is the eccentricity more is the movement due to eccentricity right so AST provided is 9 meter square 
now the net upward pressure is being calculated that is given by pu by ast provided plus 6 m by bd square m is the moment on the column and plus 6 me by bd square me is the moment due to eccentricity it will also add up to for the net upward soil pressure calculation right so finally sigma max value is 188 that is less than sbc that is okay right it should always be less than sbc and sigma minimum is greater than zero so it is okay so bearing stress check is okay so what is sigma max and sigma minimum in this case this is the case that 600 kilonewton shear force is 200 moment is 100 kilonewton meter and it is at a distance of 800 mm from the from the footing edge right so sigma minimum and this is sigma max because the uniform non-uniform pressure will be there due to the eccentricity and movement on the column so it is been calculated and by this formula right so now the depth of the footing on the basis of bending moment criteria due to the bending moment criteria which is at critical will be at the face of the column so bending moment will be critical at the face of the column we need to find the bending moment at this face right for by this formula sigma face you need to calculate at sigma face is there so sigma face at the face of the column is calculated by sigma minimum plus sigma max minus sigma minimum is this much and you need to go for the similar triangles by the sigma max by sigma minimum divide by l into lx this is the lx distance 950 it has already been calculated 950 by this that is 3000 minus 800 minus 500 by 2 gives 950 mm right so 1.95 meter so bending moment is given by this formula f1 into lx by 2 f2 into 2lx by 3 so f1 is the force in this rectangular portion this is f1 into lx by 2 so f2 into 2lx by 3 because this is the triangular portion right? so f1 is given by sigma face into lx into b this is lx into b this distance you need to calculate this area and f2 is half sigma face minus sigma minimum into lx into b so finally the bending moment is given by this formula put the value of f1 and f2 already been calculated to this and the bending moment is this much so factor bending moment is 1652 for fe415 the coefficient is 0.138 this is the 446 mm is the d required come out so you need to go for the 2 to 2.5 times of the d required for the shear consideration right so we will check if you will provide 500 mm so we will check for the one way shear check the increase is the depth is required right so if you go for 700 mm now we will check for the shear check increase in the depth is required if we go for 850 mm now we will check now ok and the safe in one way shear and safe in two way shear so 850 mm is the effective depth so cover we will go for the 50 mm cover and 20 mm the assumed bar dia so finally total depth is 910 mm and assume edge depth because we are providing a sloping footing so edge depth is minimum is 300 mm right so area of the steel according to the moment calculated 1652 dy is 830 now pt is 0.233 pt minimum is this much if you go for 16 mm so 29 numbers are required in both side because this with a spacing of 100 mm 29 numbers 16 mm 100 mm center to center if you go for 20 mm dia so number of bars will be changed and the spacing will be changed so finally if we go for 16 mm this much is the spacing right so one way shear check one way shear check the critical section will be at a distance small d from the face of the column so these are the already been calculated so we have to find the sigma d as already we have in the case of the bending moment we have find the sigma face now we have to find the sigma d in the same criteria the so sigma minimum plus sigma max minus sigma minimum divided by l into lx so it has been calculated shear force is been calculated by this formula vu is ultimate 0.15 times of v so tau v nominal shear stress is vu by bd so 0 0.30 for the solid slab is k into tau c and if the slab is greater than 300 mm the k value is 1 so tau c is been calculated by this table 19 you have you need to go for the between the pt provided 
so pt provided in our case is 0.234 it has been taken by this sheet so it is lies between 0.15 and 0.50 we need to take these values already been taken as 0.28 and 0.36 you need to change these value according to your pt provided right so this is 0.30 finally the 0.30 so okay and shape in shear now the punching shear check this is punching shear check you this is sigma average sigma minimum plus sigma max by 2 effective depth is d average is dx by plus dy by 2 for 840 critical parameter formula is two times d because the, in case of the punching shear this is at a distance d by 2 along the periphery this is a critical parameter right so this is critical parameter is calculated by d plus l plus d plus b this is much area within the critical parameter a net is given by this much ultimate punching shear force outside the critical parameter this is 1.5 times this is l minus l into b minus a net 1765 kN nominal punching shear stress vu by parameter into d average 0.39 and allowable punching shear stress is given by this formula tosi is 0.25 under root fck this is 1.12 so tovi is less than tosi finally this is ok and safe in shear now the over overturning check overturning check is very important in case of eccentric footing so in case of overturning check overturning moment should always be less than the restoring moment so we will take the moment about a for overturning moment m not this is v into footing depth v is the shear force so horizontal direction and the perpendicular distance at a is d capital d 910 plus m this is also in anti clockwise direction right so total restoring moment is p into distance from a that is p is in vertical direction and distance from a to the p is perpendicular distance plus self weight self weight will be act as at a middle right into distance from a this is 1500 mm so finally the restoring moment is calculated overturning moment is calculated net overturning moment is 1.0 times that is a factor of safety into m naught this is 423 net restoring moment is reduction factor into mr this is 1464 now in this case m naught is overturning moment is less than the restoring moment so hence safe so overturning check is okay now the transfer of load from the column to the footing this column will transfer the load to the footing so permissible load capacity at the column base this is the base of the column where the permissible p allowable is given by this formula this is 2250 kilonewton so 2250 kilonewton it can take right so actual load coming from the column is p actually is 600 kilonewton only right so finally no double bars are required in this case right if bearing capacity of the concrete is greater than the actual load from the column then no dowel bars are required so finally this is no dowel bars are required right so we have designed this eccentric footing that is the e distance from the center the additional movement is given by this eccentricity if you change these values you will get the design accordingly if you like this video, if you want this Excel sheet, please contact me on my mail ID, on my WhatsApp number. And thanks for watching. And please subscribe this channel for more design videos.